Hi, my name is Nancy Conant, and I'm going to do a demonstration of a pastel painting. I am going to begin with showing you the map of the painting. And we'll do our best to do that on video. As you can see, there are lines here. The image has been traced down onto the substrate. And we're going to darken the image now with pastel pencil. The reason why I'm tracing down the image or the drawing onto the substrate, which is velour in this case, is because velour won't tolerate sketching or um, erasing. So you need to do all of your mistakes, so to speak, on your thin piece of paper, do all of the drawing, and then you can take the uh, drawing and trace it using just normal tracing paper onto your substrate, onto the velour paper. The velour paper needs to be mounted on a board, and um, it's best if you select a, a paper. I'm selecting a blue paper because the, uh, the picture that we're going to be painting is of a cat, and there are golds in the cat, and the flower has some, uh, the flower's pink, obviously, and uh, so those are contrast colors to gold um, <clears throat> and as well, uh, kind of, sort of, to the pink. So that's why we're going with a blue velour paper. And you may ask, well, if I can't draw directly on the velour paper, why bother using velour paper? I've found with animals that is the best substrate to use, velour paper over canson paper or even sanded paper because you're gonna get fine lines with the velour paper that you won't get with any other paper. So we're gonna take this image, uh, this photograph of the cat, and we're gonna bring it over, I'm gonna take it over to my pencils I'm going to select the pencils that will help outline the painting. I'm going for these because they're my very favorite. They're all broken down into colors. As you can see, they're all color, um, color separated. But in this instance, I'm going to go ahead and pull um, a couple of colors that I think are going to best, uh, best serve our purposes for outlining the map that I've drawn or traced down onto the substrate, onto the velour paper. After I've traced my image onto the substrate, I darken in my lines, or what I call my map, using the colors that will ultimately be the colors in the painting, in the final painting. For example, the white bridge of the nose, I'm going to use uh, a light color or uh, a light cream or even a white in that area. Then I'll use a pink pencil around the flower that has various shades of pink. Ultimately, this map is going to guide me throughout the entire painting. I even traced in the whiskers, not really hard, but hard enough to make an impression that I will be able to see uh, through the underpainting that's going to be guiding me. And uh, ultimately, I'll be using that at the very end of the painting when I fill in my whiskers. All right, here we have my iPad off to the side. It's very beneficial to use the iPad because you can zoom in 
and it's just another reference uh, aid that helps me look closely at um, any portion of the painting at any given time. So I'll continue on with uh, drawing in my lines. Now here I'm outlining the eye with more of a definite line because that's going to remain and um, it's solid. <laughs> As where the edge of the flower isn't something that's solid, so I, I go rather lightly with my pencil there and uh, I'm careful to not be uniform with my drawing. I'm actually... Um, making it bumpy, just like a petal would be. So I have it all colored in now and I'm going to select a palette. Using my reference photo, I'm careful to select the color closest representing uh, the color in the photo. I'm choosing mid-tones, darks, and lights. Now as I begin my painting, I begin in the upper right corner because I'm left-handed and I don't want to run my fist or my arm through the painting. I'm starting with my darkest darks and then I'll go to my lightest lights in the painting in the area that I begin in, which in this case is the flower. As I lay down paint, I press it into the velour, into the fabric. As you can see, I've already painted in the green leaf and the stem and a little bit of the background, the black. But as I'm looking at the reference, I kind of don't like the green that I've chosen. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and choose a green with a little more blue in it. Here I'm going to look through what I've got in the new pastel set and then I'm going to move down to my drawer and pick some colors from here too. Back to the drawing board, I'm going to try some of these new colors that I have. Some of these pastels are hard, some of them are a little bit softer. The difference between a hard and a soft pastel is how they lay down. As you can see, I'm coming in with that bluer green and making some adjustments. Paintings are always a series of adjustments. And uh, as I'm working into that uh, blue-green, I'm working it into the green that I already have, and it just paints over it real well. Pastels are very forgiving. And now I'm working on the black in the background. And uh, the reason I'm doing that is twofold. You build from the back and move forward in a pastel painting as you do in an oil painting. And it also helps that front item that I'm working on stand out. Flowers under painting has been painted working uh, the colors into each other. Darks working with the lights. Here I'm holding up a new container for the pastels, keeping them organized based on the area of the painting. Here I am uh, doing very fine work using a pencil, the detail work between the nose and the petal. And I'm also working the light on the forehead, the highest light on the forehead and on the nose. Looking carefully at my reference to make sure that I'm following it well. I am now working the under eye in the highest high that in the under painting. I'm now working on the mid-tones and the darks following the reference very closely and uh, putting down a lot of gray in that lower under part of the chin and the neck laying in some more of those grays, mid-tones, and being careful to make sure that it's forming well to the cat's structure and the bone structure in the skull.
choosing a mid-tone pastel, I'm beginning with the gold area and I'm going to move into the black area. And these markings on the Calico Cat are all part of the underpainting and they're to be worked into the fabric with my finger. As you can see, it's beginning to take form as we uh, use our lights and our darks and our mid-tones. We're literally sculpting shape, um, much like a sculpture. Uh, we're seeing some uh, areas where we're going to need to make some adjustments, but overall, I think it's coming along nicely. Always remember that when you're painting, it is always a series of adjustments. So as you can see, I'm coming in and I'm highlighting the places that are light on these upper layers on the flower and uh, just kind of reinforcing what I've already got down using softer pastels to lay down more color in the areas that uh, I want to darken down. And I'm um, using some pencils to burnish that uh, paint rather than using my fingers. As I'm coming in with the deeper uh, colors in the areas that fold on the petals um, and the highlights where the petals come up, now I'm working on the green leaves that are underneath the petals, but I want them to be just a suggestion. So I'm going dark on those and then I will highlight them with uh, uh, lighter greens. So I'm working in some of the color that's in the background and I'm going to build on top of that the background leaves, the leaves that are behind the petals and uh, they're real subtle so I'm not going to have any sharp edges there. Um, they're going to be real soft edges on those leaves so that they're very subtle. Here I'm making subtle highlights on the lower leaves to be consistent with the light source coming in. And uh, I'm gonna refine the edges of the petals, making sure that they are um, not, again, not uniform, but kind of have some rough edges a little bit to them. They're not straight edges. They curve up, they curve down. Where they curve up, that light is gonna hit them. Where they curve down, it'll be darker. I'm uh, gonna try to keep my fingers out of it as much as possible and burnish with just a pencil. But um, for the most part, I'm gonna come in with um, a little bit darker uh, pastel pencil to bring down some of those highlights that started to get just a little bit too high. I will also define some of the petals a little bit better than what I have right now. Um, depending on the light source again, that definition will come in either with a lighter pencil or with a darker pencil. Using a utility knife, I'm gonna uh, sharpen my thicker pencils that I can't get into my pencil sharpener. And I'm gonna just gently and carefully uh, chip away at the wood. Be careful not to dent into the pencil itself and spin the pencil around doing so. Just work in the uh white area behind that petal on the nose and um, I'm trying to
trying to keep that white area white, which is a little tricky because you blow a lot of dust, and so it constantly needs to be re-touched um, up. I'm penciling in with a pink and then I'll switch over to a purple as well. The reflective light or it's actually a shadow but I don't want to go too dark because I don't want Kitty to have a hole in her head. So I want to be very careful how deep that shadow gets. So I've got the right, uh, the right colors in there. Now I just need to temper it a bit with a white. Here's a closer look for you of the uh, reflective light in the shadows on the kitty's face. It's starting to come along. Now this pastel I made at home using uh, lots of uh, leftover little bits of grays and mixing them with water after they've been crushed into a fine powder and I'm going to use it in the background here. You can see here how I used the gray homemade pastel and then laid over that black. I'm doing a few more touch-ups using the pastel pencils and uh, emphasizing the center portion of the flower and uh, darkening it down. Now I'm going to get started on the eye and uh, starting to work out the details and um, there's some gray in this one section. I'm going to paint that in. And there's also some reflective light, and I'm going to put that in so that it doesn't get covered up later on while I'm doing my underpainting. I'm using the sharp edge of a pastel to cut into the black area on the cat's fur. To sharpen your pastel, you're going to want to put a sandpaper, piece of sandpaper, um, in a tray or a dish, something like that, and sand it on the flat edge, just going in a cross motion until all four edges are very squared. Once you have that, you take those four edges, and each edge is just going to create um, uh, very thin lines and that's how you're going to start to make your fur is by just running those thin lines gently and real short strokes over your velour paper. Once you feel it getting a little bit dull then you turn to the next edge until you've dulled all four sides and then you just repeat the process. Here I'm working in the eye still using the sharp edges of the pastel and I'm uh, bringing in um, several hues of green uh, kind of similar to the colors that I used in the leaves actually. I want harmony when I'm using color on my paintings and so I try to bounce the colors that I'm using in one area in the other areas of the painting rather than grabbing a different color from elsewhere. There are so many beautiful colors in this eye. Golds, greens, rusts, um, just lots of stuff going on in that eye and you can really go to town with it, but you have to be careful not to overpaint in the eye. So you kind of want to get in, get out and uh, let, let it be, don't, don't go too wild on the eye or you can overpaint and muddy it real easy.
as you can see I'm using my very white pastel to re-establish the highlights in the eye. I'm darkening in the black marking of the calico cat with a softer pastel called a sennelier. The softer the pastel, the more readily it lays down paint. After completely covering the area with the soft black pastel, I go ahead and work that into the fabric just like I did with the harder pastel. All right, so I'm working the lower part now of the cat's face. Uh, reworking some of the grays in there uh, using some harder pastels and some softer pastels. The softer the pastel, the less um, pressure I'm going to use as I'm laying down my paint. Coming on the edge, I'm trying to lighten up the lip area just a bit and reestablish some of the little pockets for the whiskers without losing my lip line. I also want to reestablish the shape of the cheek and I'm bringing in some darker purple for the reflective light in the shadow. Even carrying some of the purple down into the black area just to bounce that color around the whole painting. With the reflective light, I'm just working in the color with the grays need to reestablish some of those whisker pockets because they get covered up as I work on the shadows over on the cheek. So we don't want those to get lost. Those are part of the map. And I'm also going to touch up in the black and start to work some of the highlights that are in the black. And there's also a white whisker up there too. In addition, there are white streaks of fur in that black. And uh, if I don't like how it looks, I can go ahead, wipe it out, put some black over it, and then try it again. bringing some light into the dark shadows to give more dimension to those cute little cheeks of hers. This homemade shield I can use to protect the paint uh, from being smudged. So this area is larger than the circle so I'm going to go ahead and turn it uh, the other way. Rest my hand on it and then proceed with my work. Wipe it down real well first and <laughs> make sure that there isn't any former dust on it. Just reestablishing those pockets. It looks to me as if this leads to lead down a little bit longer than what I have it currently as far as um, the areas where the whiskers come out of. I hear my little puppy just wandering in the room. So I will introduce you to her. Her name is Sela Noel, and Sela is 13 weeks old and is a bundle of fun. <laughs> Back to the painting. Using a sharp pastel, I'm cutting into that gray with the white. And this is just a repeated process of sharpening up that pastel, getting those four sharp edges, 
working it into the various uh, colors on the calico uh, fur and uh, bringing in your highlights and taking down your darker shadows. Carefully taking that sharp pastel and working the bottom of the chin so that it really looks like that's fur on the bottom. So I'm cutting some black into the white or into the gray rather, and some of the gray is cutting into the black, the background. And I'm gonna kind of mute it out because it's not a real hard edge it's more out of focus see Okay, this is probably a good place to pause. It's really important to step away from the easel frequently. I photograph my work so that I can see it from a different perspective. Uh, the old masters would look at their paintings in a mirror to get a different view. But stepping away frequently from the easel is really important. Tomorrow we're gonna work on the gold area and finish the lower part of the neck. Good morning, Nancy Conant here. I'm going to go ahead and finish up this cute little cat named Charlotte. And, um, we were working yesterday on the white area of the fur, this area in particular, right here. We were darkening down the darks. We were highlighting the lights. And uh, now we're just gonna refine some of those places and work with the golden part of the hair, of the fur. And then we'll finish up the touches and sign the painting. Okay, I'm using a paintbrush to take out a mistake that got into the white, cleaning the edge of the brush, making sure I'm not getting any other colors in there. And with a clean toothbrush, I'm refining some, lightly refining some of the fur areas without uh, undoing my work. That pencil that I'm using is just, again, to refine some of those lines, fine lines that I have in there. In terms of using the pencil, I don't generally use this method entirely to create fur or whiskers, but it can be useful at times uh, because it does create different variations in thickness in the fur. Over here, it, you can see that the fur is coming in many different directions. So um, I wanna make sure that I get that as I start to focus on the gold. And uh, there's different variations in hues of golds and I want to bring all of those colors in. Completing the underpainting to the gold part of the calico markings. I've sharpened my pastel, made those four corners real sharp, and I'm working it into the black, making those lines very, very thin. I'm also uh, bringing in different hues of golds.
using that toothbrush to refine some of those lines without undoing my work. You don't want to put fingers in those lines. And I just keep building on it and building on it and it just is layer after layer of different shades of of gold with highlights and going even lighter still. Then I take the black and I start to cut it into the gold. And you just kind of go back and forth, of course, using a, a very sharp edge to do so and very fine lines. So this is really a process of sharpen, paint, uh, very thin lines, short lines, watching the direction, carefully watching the direction of the fur uh, on your reference, and, and then repeating the process. There's a little bit of blemish that got onto the black fur. Don't know what it is, but I don't want it there, so taking it off with the paintbrush and then wiping the brush off again real well. So if you just kind of block off everything else and look right at that area that we just worked on, looks like it's coming along pretty well. comparing it to its reference and making sure that that fur is going in all the wild directions that it needs to be going in and then making those highlights and those low lights is real important. Using the brush, I'm going to work the fur into the canvas and take out anything that's just too prominent and uh, kind of blend it in a sense and then uh, go in and work it some more. Now I see that I have a pretty little patch of fur going on, although to me it's looking sort of flat. So I'm looking more closely at my reference photo and I'm seeing that I kind of missed something when I was doing my underpainting and really when I was doing my map. I didn't get the contours in that area. So I'm gonna take a look at a book and see how the cat skeletal area works on the head. And really the cheekbone sort of carries up so I need to do that in my painting. So I'm going to shadow the area that is above the cheekbone and lighten the area where the cheekbone is, where that light would be prominent. And then beneath that bone, darken that area down. So this is a way to get around it if you kind of missed it. Um, on the preliminary preliminary part of your underpainting. I just keep refining it and bringing everything to the edge where my crop line will be. a close-up view of that gold area that we've worked and the eye 
and it's starting to look pretty realistic, but the pupil has been dulled down by all of the work that we've been doing. So I wanna to touch up the black areas. I'm also going to uh, darken down the background on the upper part of the painting and even kind of work it into the leaf because I don't want the leaf to be prominent. It's just a subtle element in the painting and that's the place that it should get. So if there are any hard edges there, I want to take them away and kind of pull the leaf out of focus. Using my pastel pencil, I'm accentuating some of the leaves. They kind of got lost in the, in the shuffle there, so I'm um, setting them apart either with lights or with darks, depending on how the light is hitting them. Also hitting some highlights into that golden area on the calico markings and deepening the gray on the throat area. Brushing off that layer of dust that's accumulated from all the blowing of gold and black and uncovering some of that white white that's uh, supposed to be there on the cat's forehead and nose. So I'm gonna blow that away and then I'm gonna go in with my white white pastel and I'm going to re-emphasize the white on the bridge of the nose and on the forehead. Sharpening up my pastel, it's whisker time, and I am going to use the lines that are already created from the map that I laid down initially. I didn't put the impressions real deep, but they were deep enough that they remained impressions and I could see them even through uh, through my underpainting even through the top layers so I just kind of followed those lines and uh, carried on with my whiskers but just darkened them in with a pastel and uh, remembering that the whisker isn't just one color and it's not one width it's uh, thin at the bottom thicker in the middle and then a little bit thicker at the very top. It's time to sign, my favorite time. <laughs> so I use the same uh, board that I use to protect my painting. I'm using a transparency um, over the painting to protect it so my hand doesn't run through that. And then using that, that cardboard I had earlier, I just use it as a straight edge as a guide as I sign my name. All right, here we have it. There's my little signature, my humble little signature in there. And we've got Flower Girl, number two. Thank you so much for tuning into this video and for being a part of this tutorial. It's been really fun for me. I hope it's been fun for you and educational. And uh, I hope to make more of these videos and I hope that you tune in again. Thanks, bye.